Dennis, uh, how do you feel? This very beautiful morning, I feel very, very good. Thank you. Is it your first time in Nepal or in Pokhara? It's my first time in Nepal and I cannot wait to be back for sure. Uh, so you had a session yesterday. How has been your experience been in the Nepal Literature Festival? Well, first of all, it's just the most beautiful setting um, on the banks of the lake. It couldn't get more perfect, really. It's so pretty. And um, the festival grounds are laid out so nicely. There's just lots of color and um, lots of space. And um, we had the most delicious tea. And um, the bookstore and the little signing corners, they've all just been really thoughtfully and very carefully set up. So I really appreciate that. Could you tell us about your journey as a writer? What got you into writing, Janice? Well, I think I started writing because I was surrounded by storytellers um, while I was growing up um, in Shillong, in Assam. I grew up in a community of oral storytellers who loved telling stories um, at all sorts of gatherings. And so I became a writer, I think, because I grew up as a listener. And um, my love for storytelling was, I think, imbued in me because I was surrounded by these wonderful storytellers um, in, my, in my childhood. And I think from there, it's just been... Um, it's never an easy journey, but it's been a very challenging and a very rewarding one. And I really can't imagine doing anything else with my life. But it's so beautifully. So as a reader, what do you enjoy reading? What genres? What are some of your favorite books? Such a difficult question because um, as soon as someone asks me what my favorite book is, my mind goes blank because there are so many and I never know where to start. Um, but I've been reading um, a wonderful book by Peter Frankopan very recently called The Earth Transformed. Um, and it's a big nonfiction book and quite an epic book at that. And I've been really enjoying that. I've been reading a book of short stories by Vohanivara called This is Salvage. So my reading tastes are very eclectic, I think. I sort of, you know, just uh, feel that the right books will find me at the right time. Thank you so much. Your writing often explores themes of identity and culture. How do your personal experiences and background influence your storytelling? That's a really good question. Um, I think I come from everywhere in, in, in some ways because even though home is Shillong, my uh, ethnic heritage is very, very mixed and very um, varied. So I have uh, Portuguese heritage, I have British heritage, I have indigenous Khasi and Jantia heritage as well. Um, so in some ways, I'm a child of colonization and I come from everywhere. And, you know, vast historical forces have played a large part in placing me um, where I am and where I come from. I think the scope of my fiction tries to address that and tries to accommodate that in its vastness, in its, um, its, in its um, attempt to look at the world with uh, new eyes, um, to understand that many, many things are connected in ways that are very unexpected and startling. So I feel as though that really is a reflection of you know my own mix and varied and vast sort of heritage. That's very interesting to note. Uh, I found out that you're also an educator. You teach at Ashoka University. And there are different kinds of programs for uh, writers with different levels of experience in writing. Uh, what has your experience been as an educator and what do you learn from young and curious minds willing to write? Such a lovely question again. Um, so I fell into teaching by accident, really, but I've enjoyed it so, so much because it's been transformative in so many ways. I think to be a good teacher, you have to be a good student. So you're always learning in a classroom alongside all of um, the others who are there. And um, for me, cre teaching creative writing is about actually opening up a space for creative thinking, to think about how do we tell stories in our world today 
um, what influences do we, you know, acknowledge? What mediums do we use? Do we use text, visuals, Instagram? Do we use, you know, um, photographs? Um, so I think bringing creative thinking into a classroom is very important because it allows for that wide-ranging kind of scope. Um, what I've learned from my students so, so much, probably much more than they've ever learned from me. But I think that thinking about writing and talking about writing with them has helped me become a better writer because I think about theme, I think about structure, I think about language in ways that are much more precise because I've had the privilege to be in discussion about these things with them already. I would love to learn from you someday, Janice. So uh, aside from fiction, you also write poetry and essays. How does your approach across these different uh, forms of writing differ and how do you approach uh, writing in such various forms? Right. Um, I think it really depends on what kind of story I'm trying to tell. So at the heart of it, I'm trying to honor what the story deserves and what the story um, requires. How do you best tell the story, right? That's the question with which I always begin. Um, sometimes stories can only be accommodated in vast novels. Sometimes uh, a story, a moment, an experience can best be captured in a poem. Uh, sometimes you you want to do a little digging and you want to um, be able to maybe tie lots of different, um, you know, uh, things together. And perhaps then the space of reportage or a features piece is is much more appropriate. So it really does depend on what the story is and how best I can honor the telling of that story. So throughout your writing career, has there been any impactful or memorable moment that has significantly uh, influenced your writing career or your journey as a writer? Yeah, I think the moment where I realized that um, I am so lucky and so fortunate to come from a community of oral storytellers. I think we live in a very script centric world and we live in a, in uh, you know we live in a world where we are taught mainly through books and texts and um, we learn you know in that way all through school and university and much beyond. And while that is an exceedingly important way to learn, I feel as though my my world really expanded when I realized that, life also lies beyond the pages um, and that my own um, storytelling roots lie not in script but in the spoken and the sung. I think for me coming to accept that and acknowledge that and realize that has really changed the, the way that I relate to language, the way that I relate to my own writing and Thank you. So as an author for aspiring writers who are willing to write, do you have any suggestions or do you think creative writing can be taught? Um, I think creative writing can be discussed. I think we can uh, encourage each other to ask important questions about what we're trying to do in a story, what kind of literary decisions we're trying to make on a page and why. I think that the, the atmosphere of good questions can be something inculcated. I don't think anyone can particularly teach you to write a perfect sentence because I don't think that's really the point. But I think that we can craft spaces of, you know, meaningful discussion around writing and why we're taking certain literary decisions to tell our stories. And that helps us become better storytellers and better writers for sure. Um, the only bit of advice I would ever have, I think, is 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 something that was told to me once. Um, and I would say that uh, no one else can tell your story. Um, you've led a life and you've had a series of experiences that are unique to you and you alone. And your story is exactly like that, unique. Amazing. I'm mesmerized. I love the way you put articulately put up your ideas. Uh, Janice, you have amazing line of books, Boats on Land, Everything the Light Touches, which was also one of the best books listed by New Yorker magazine for 2022. 
So what next can we expect? What are you working on? Something entirely different, I think. I like challenging myself. I like becoming a new person and a new writer with each literary project that I pick up. But I have to admit that I've been thinking still very much about the themes that were resonant in Everything the Light Touches, which which um, relate to the world around us and what our relationship is to the natural world individually and as a species. So I think it will be a literary project that goes on to explore in perhaps different ways this very, very crucial question. Thank you. I, I can't wait to hear and read about your next book. I come back to the festival, Janice. Uh, what do you look forward uh, to the festival today? You have a session called The Art of Editing Fiction. Well, what do you look forward to the remaining days? I mean, I am looking forward to being part of a discussion with an old friend, Chandras Chaudhary. We've known each other for quite a few years. And it's always wonderful that in spaces like these and festivals like these, you are brought together um, again and you are allowed the opportunity to share ideas, to have conversations. So there's nothing really even better than that. But I really look forward to actually being by the lake to listening to other authors, to having conversations also outside the space of the stage, to watching the light change on the lake. Um, it really is very beautiful. So I'm just looking forward to absorbing everything that I can absorb while I'm here. Did you get to interact with uh, some of your writers? How was the experience? Yes, we, we had a lovely evening yesterday um, at uh, the the space uh, above on the rooftop and we just had the most wonderful conversations. I am learning so much about Nepal, about indigenous communities here, about the history of the country. It's been so eye-opening and so, so interesting and I can't wait to learn even more um, today. So, uh by far, what would you say is your highlight of the Surya Nepal Gata Nepal Literature Festival? <laughs> I think, honestly, being in conversation with Pratibha yesterday, it was such a delight and such an honor. And it felt like we were old friends catching up, even though we just met an hour before the session. And I think these kind of rare connections are what um, I'm so grateful for within festivals such as these because they bring together people and you form friendships and these bonds that go far beyond the festival. So finally, could you describe the Surya Nepal Gata Nepal Literature Festival in three words? It's absolutely unmissable. Thank you so much, Janice. We had this short talk with Janice and please watch her session, which is live on YouTube as well and the Facebook channel of Nepal Literature Festival. And we hope to see you again, Janice.